Hey, what's up guys? John here, and today we'll be covering how to kill a Raxor with melee. Before we get into it, keep in mind that the point of this video isn't to show you how to get speed kills, but rather to learn all the mechanics and how to kill the boss with melee as a beginner. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's jump into the guide. First off, there's a table of contents in the description with timestamps linking to each section of the guide. Feel free to skip around if you only need information within a specific part. Before I cover the recommended stats and gear, just know that these recommendations are aimed to be at a level where you can get consistent and efficient kills. Don't be afraid to try the boss with lower stats or lower tiered gear than what I recommend, just know that attempting it with worse levels and gear than listed is going to be a lot more difficult as a result. For the recommended stats, I strongly recommend having level 90 plus combat stats, level 96 herbal for overloads or at least a level where you can boost to them, level 95 prayer for the turmoil curse, and at least level 67 summoning for a war to speech to burden. Again, you can kill the boss with lower stats, it's just going to be more difficult and may not necessarily be worth the effort until you train up higher. As for the gear, we'll be covering a higher level and more expensive setup, as well as a lower tiered cheaper setup. First off, for the lower tier setup, you'll want a Dragon Rider Lance along with full Banos armor. For your cape, use the highest level one you have, for this setup I'm using a melee kiln cape, but something like a skill cape will do fine. As for your jewelry, I recommend an Asylum Surgeon's Ring and an Amulet of Fury or better. In the pocket slot, you can take a Scrimshaw of Vampirism if you can afford it, but if not, then just take a Sign of Life. As for your aura, you'll either want Berserker or Supreme Brawler if you have them, but Vampirism is another option as well. In your inventory, you'll want Overloads if you have them, a Prayer Renewal, two or three Super Restores, some Ceridom and Brews if you feel comfortable spending the money on them, as well as an Anti-Poison++ plus plus Potion. You'll also want the highest level melee shield you have. For the rest of your inventory, just fill it with Sharks. Brews aren't required, but they let you heal more at once than just spamming sharks, and they give you more room for air if you get into trouble during the kill and end up taking too much damage. Just remember that drinking brews will lower your stats, so if you're using extremes, you'll want to restore your stats and pop back up after drinking a brew. The anti-poison is absolutely essential, especially when killing a Raxor with melee since you will apply a high damage and consistent poison attack throughout the entire kill, not just on phase 4. Now for the higher level and more expensive setup, I recommend a Noxious Scythe along with full Malevolent Armor. For your gloves and boots, I recommend Razorback Gauntlets and Torva Boots. As for your jewelry, you'll want either an Amulet of Souls or a Reaper Necklace, along with an Asylum Surgeon's Ring. In your pocket slot, take a Scrimshaw of Vampirism. As for your aura, Berserker is the best option, followed by Supreme Brawler. In the ammo slot, take a Terran Wing Quiver if you have it for a free prayer boost. In your inventory, take a Supreme Overload and Prayer Renewal, a Replenishment Potion, and a Super Restore. You'll also definitely need an Anti-Poison++ plus plus Potion if you don't have the Venom Blood perk. In addition, take the highest level shield you have, a Ring of Vigor, Enhanced Excalibur, and Luck of the Dwarves if you can afford it. You'll also want around 6 Ceridolin Brews and just fill the rest of your inventory with Rock Tails. In both setups, you'll want the highest level Beast of Burden you can summon filled entirely with food. Once you get the hang of the boss and feel more comfortable with it, you can take a Blood Nihil Hill for an extra 5% melee accuracy. Another thing that is consistent across both setups is a halberd range weapon. The reason for this is that if you use one, you will not have to stand within melee distance to a Raxor to attack him, so you only have to worry about being attacked with ranged. The melee attack a Raxor does is very strong, so staying out of the distance is optimal. With the gear and inventory covered, let's go over a Raxor's enrage mechanic. The enrage mechanic is best described as saying the kill gets more difficult as it progresses through a variety of different actions within it. Araxor's Enrage is gauged by a small red icon at the top of the screen. The higher the Enrage, the more accurate Araxor will hit, and the more damage his attacks will do. It's worth noting that the special attack damage is also increased from Enrage, not just his base attacks. The Enrage will increase throughout the kill based on many things, but more specifically, destroying eggs, killing minions, and acidity. Once Phase 4 begins and Araxi takes over, the Enrage changes are a bit more dramatic. Once she reaches 50,000 life points, the Enrage will increase by 1% every 2 attacks. Once she reaches 25k life points, she will gain a flat 20% Enrage increase, as well as 5% each attack from that point on. The last thing to mention is that upon a successful kill, Araxor will start with 20% more base Enrage from the kill before. What this means is that each kill makes the next one more difficult. This caps at 300% starting Enrage, and can be reset by consuming an Araxite Pheromone. Now that we understand the Enrage mechanic, the next thing we'll cover is Araxor's special attacks. The main four specials are the Cocoon, Web Shield, Egg Bombs, and the Cleave Attack. First off, the Cocoon is indicated by a swarm of small spiders rushing to your character and results in your character being covered in a web cocoon. 
This special starts out dealing 200 damage per tick, which increases based upon the enrage. When you get cocooned, you will want to spam click as quickly as you can anywhere on the screen to get out. We'll cover this specific part more later in the guide, but having freedom or anticipation active when you get cocooned will significantly reduce the amount of clicks you need to escape and the time spent stuck. Next up, the web shield is indicated by Raxar bunkering down and creating a shield made of webs surrounding him. While the shield is active, all damage you deal to him will be reflected back towards yourself. This can be very deadly, but also very useful. A way to use the special to your advantage is by using something like an auto attack or the quake ability, and then immediately switching to your shield and using the resonance ability to heal back the damage reflected. In addition to all damage being reflected, Raxar will also heal 1000 life points a total of 5 times. It's worth noting that the damage you deal is not necessarily going to be the same damage that's reflected back. For example, you could deal 1000 damage and be reflected for 3000 depending on how high the enrage is. Next up, we have the Cleave special. The Cleave doesn't give much in the way of warning, it just starts by Araxar pulling his legs back and dragging your character in, and then swiping his legs in front of him. This attack is extremely deadly at higher enrages, but deals relatively lower damage when it's your first kill of the day. This special, like the Cocoon, is affected by the Freedom and Anticipation abilities. If either of them are active before the cleave is triggered, then your character will not be pulled in towards Araxar for the cleave. However, since this is a melee guide, you will still need to run away from Araxar immediately to avoid taking damage. You'll probably get hit your first few times experiencing the cleave before getting the hang of the fight, so just keep your life points high and you will be able to survive being hit by it. The last of the main specials that can happen on any rotation is the Egg Bombs. This special is indicated by three spider eggs appearing on the ground nearby, and a flaming projectile flying towards your character. All you have to do for this special is to stand on top of the eggs. If you stand on them, you will only take 300 damage and all of the eggs will be exploded. If you don't end up getting close enough to the eggs, you will take 3000 damage and three minion spiders will spawn out of the eggs. The four specials that we just covered can happen on any rotation. From here on we'll go over the specials that are unique to each path or rotation. First off, we have the special unique to Path 1, the Spider Minions. Araxer will spawn 20 spiders in total and 5 at a time. There are 5 types of spiders, Bladed, Spitting, Imbued, Pulsing, and Mirror Back. Bladed, Spitting, and Imbued have no special mechanics, they just attack with their specified combat style. The spiders you will need to prioritize killing are the Pulsing and the Mirror Backs. Pulsing spiders heal Raxar 5,000 life points every 5 seconds, so you'll want to kill them as quickly as you can to avoid losing progress. The mirror back spiders are extremely deadly, reflecting any damage you deal to Raxar back towards you. You will want to kill them as quickly as you can, and be very careful when using area of effect abilities like Cleave, Hurricane, or Quake. The good news to make dealing with these spiders a little bit easier is that there is a specific pattern in which the spiders will always spawn in. On the first wave of 5 spiders, the Pulsing or Mayrak spider will be the third spider to spawn. On the second wave, they will be the second of the 5 to spawn. On the third wave, they will always be the first. On the fourth and last wave, it will be all combat spiders and no beer backs or Pulsings to worry about. Use this information to your advantage and try to time your abilities so you know you aren't about to accidentally die to a mirror back after you're using an ability like Hurricane. Keep in mind that you will only encounter this special mechanic if Path 1 is open. Expanding on that, you will not experience the minion spawning until phase 3 if you took a path other than path 1, in which case you will encounter it on phase 2. Path 2's unique special is the highly acidic spider. This spider is a bright green spider that will explode and one hit you if it manages to reach you. The attack is indicated by Raxor stomping his feet like he would for his melee attack animation, and then launching a projectile which turns into a pool of acid on the floor. You will want to keep your distance from this pool and the subsequent spider that spawns out of it. The speed at which the spider chases you is random, sometimes it's very quick, sometimes very slow. You just need to stay away from it until its timer depletes to nothing and it will disappear. Similar to the spider mechanic on path 1, this special will only occur if path 2 is open. The third unique special, specific to path 3, is the darkness or light spot. During this special, Araxer will turn the whole room dark other than a single circle of light on the floor. While in the darkness, you will take a constant damage over time hit until the special is over. To avoid the damage, simply walk to the spot of light. Again, just like the previous two specials, this mechanic will only be encountered if path 3 is open. Another thing to make note of before we jump into the actual fight is the rotation system. Araxer has a total of 3 paths that you can take. Furthermore, only two paths will be available at any given time. 
Each rotation lasts for four daily resets, and you can check which rotation it is currently by checking Araxi in your Beast tab in-game. The last thing to cover before getting into the actual fight is the spawn mechanics. Araxor can spawn in either a melee, ranged, or magic form. If you're fighting him with melee, it's more or less essential that you make sure the form of Araxor you're going to be fighting is ranged based or else the kill is going to be exponentially more difficult. The way that you guarantee the spawn that matches with your combat style is by either having an Araxite pheromone in your inventory when entering the fight or by creating a private instance. Keep in mind that the pheromone is not consumed by entering into the fight, so long term it is more cost effective to use it rather than making an instance. Now that we know all the prerequisite information to Araxor, it's time to actually jump down through the web and start the fight. Beginning with phase 1, you will want to burn the web for which path you would like to take and begin attacking Araxor. You will want to make sure that you are standing one square outside of melee distance so Araxor cannot attack you with his melee attack. This will only be possible if your weapon is a halberd or has halberd range. It takes some practice getting used to, especially if you have to move for specials, but with time you will get a feel for exactly where you need to stand to avoid getting meleeed. During phase 1, the only specials you encounter will be the cleave, web shield, and the cocoon. Also, Araxor will never use a special back to back on phase 1, which allows you to plan out your ability rotations better. The first special of the fight can happen at any time, so I usually use anticipation right at the beginning as he climbs down from the ceiling. Remember to rotate anticipation or freedom before every fifth attack Araxor does from this point on to avoid the specials. At this point, you should build up to 100% adrenaline and get ready to use the Berserk ability. Before you use Berserk, make sure that it isn't going to be wasted by a special like a web shield. I recommend just more or less kind of waiting until after the web shield mechanic to use Berserk. Once you Zerk, you want to sip your adrenaline potion and then use Cleave and Sever and build to over 50% adrenaline. Depending on the timing, you will want to use either Hurricane or Assault here. To decide which one you want to use first, it's as simple as making sure you use Assault where it has time to fire off fully so it's not interrupted by a special. I usually use Hurricane and then Assault after the next special. At this point, Araxor should be fairly low life points, and you can finish the remaining health before the end of phase 1 with basics and thresholds. Slaughter is another ability that is extremely useful for Araxor, so remember to use it as often as you can. Not too much changes here depending on which setup you're using, it's still pretty straightforward. The only real difference is going to be how quickly you will be able to damage Araxor down to below 5000 life points before moving on to the next phase. With phase 1 finished, this is where the guide breaks off into 3 parts, depending on which path you took. First off, we'll cover the first of the 3 paths, path 1, also known as the minion path. Phase 2 on path 1 is probably going to be the most difficult of all paths for a beginner, as the previously mentioned spider minions can become overwhelming. If you skip to this part of the guide or need a reminder in the mechanics of the minion spiders, refer to the table of contents in the description for the breakdown. Once the web is burnt, wait for a special attack, and then run over the invisible line that takes the boss to phase 2. Once phase 2 begins, Araxor will always start off with an egg bomb as his first special of the phase. This is why you will want to always wait until just after he does a special on phase 1 before starting the next phase. Doing so gives you enough time to use Berserk, gain adrenaline back, and use thresholds before he egg bombs since he will need to do a full 5 auto attacks. Once the eggs spawn, run to where they are on the ground. From this point on, Araxor can use any special attack from phase 1 as well as his new egg bomb and spider spawn specials. There's no set order to the specials, so just be prepared for anything. Once Araxor spawns minions, you will want to stop attacking him and immediately begin killing all of the spider minions. Again, remember to prioritize killing the mirror back and the pulsing spiders mentioned previously in the guide. When you aren't killing minions, make sure to continue damaging Araxor as well. Just remember the order that the spiders spawn in and plan accordingly as to not accidentally die to a reflect from a mirror back. Use your area of effect abilities to your advantage here as they are extremely helpful for clearing out huge groups of spiders quickly. Once you get Araxor down to under 10k life points or so, run down the path and get ready for phase 3. Keep in mind that if you proceed to phase 3 before killing all the spiders, they will continue to spawn throughout the rest of the kill until all 20 have been spawned and killed. Sometimes you'll end up with Araxor being down to under 10k life points or less without having spawned all spiders. Don't be afraid to switch phases, just make sure that you have them all killed before going to phase 4. You can always check how many spiders are left by hovering over the little icon at the top of the screen next to the enrage icon. Next up for phase 2 we have path 2 or the acid path. On this path Araxor absorbs acid and then drops it down onto the ramp which destroys it and allows you to move on to phase 3. This path introduces the one hit acidic spider that I mentioned earlier in the video 
as well as the egg bombs, as well as retaining all specials from phase one other than the cocoon. As a quick reminder, if Araxor performs a melee attack animation without actually being able to melee you, look around for the projectile in the air or smaller pool of acid on the ground. This can be tough to see depending on where it lands, so your best bet is to just pay very close attention at all times. Remember that if the spider does spawn, run away and keep your distance until the timer expires. The first thing you'll want to do on this phase is move Araxor into the big pool of acid. He will then start to gain acidity, which you can keep track of by hovering over the green meter under his health bar at the top. To destroy the ramp, he will need to drop 50% acidity down onto the ramp. This means that you'll actually want to get this number to around 60 to 70% just to be safe as he does drop some while on the way up to the ramp before he gets to the correct spot to destroy it. The method here is to deal with the specials while damaging your Axor as much as you can while he's collecting the acid. Once he reaches 60%, wait for the next special to go off and then run up the ramp and stand one square away from the edge of it. The reason you will want to wait for a special is so that he doesn't stop halfway up the ramp to do something like a web shield, which will result in you needing to run back down to the pool to collect more acid. Also, the reason that you want to step one square back from the edge of the ramp is so that you can step back if he performs his cleave special while on the ramp. Once the ramp changes and shows signs of being damaged by the acid, you'll know you have him in the right spot. From this point on, just be ready for any specials and continue to damage Araxor down as low as you can before he finishes dropping the required acid down onto the ramp. In some instances, Araxor will spawn the acidic one-hit spider while sitting on the ramp, and your best bet in this situation is to use either Barricade or Immortality. These are both better options than running away and back down and requiring more time spent gathering acid from the pool, so make sure you keep your adrenaline high and just be prepared. Once the ramp is destroyed, Araxor will move on to phase 3, and you can click to jump over the ledge to start the next phase. Now onto the third and last path, path 3 is probably the easiest path for a beginner. The reason for this is that you don't have to actually fight the boss on this phase. Rather than fighting the boss, on this phase you are constantly damaged by damage over time hits from the darkness, and need to run to the spots of light on the ground to avoid it. On this phase, Araxor will alternate between magic and ranged attacks, but they come much less frequently than a normal phase. In addition to these basic attacks, you will need to keep an eye out for egg bombs. There are a few tips and tricks for this phase. First off, you can stall adrenaline to make phase 3 quicker, but if you're a beginner, it might just be more helpful to use the regenerate ability. In addition to this, take advantage of Araxor's basic attacks and try to heal from them with resonance. One other thing worth mentioning is that having the mobile perk for this phase is extremely useful. The mobile perk will allow you to search to every single spot of light, which is really nice for reducing the time spent in the darkness and as a result the damage you take. You'll be fine if you don't have it, it'll just make things easier if you do. After about a minute of running around to the light spots, you will get a message letting you know that Araxor is preparing to come down and charge. Shortly afterwards, Araxor will charge at your character in a cutscene like animation. You will have to either press or click on an arrow key to avoid taking damage and to also ensure that Araxor does the full damage to the wall blocking you from phase 3. On screen now you will see the different animations in which key to press. I've also included a cheat sheet image in the description that will show you each animation in which key to press with them. After some time you'll memorize which animations are what and be able to handle this part with ease. Assuming you chose the correct arrow key, Araxor will damage the wall fully and a new bar will appear at the top of your screen. This bar is blue and is the wall's health bar. Upon successfully dodging the charge, the wall will be damaged by 50%. After the charge, you will have to do what you just did another time, running to the light spots for about a minute, and once again, Araxor will charge you. If you avoid the charge correctly again, the wall will be broken down entirely, and you can move on to phase 3. If you mess up, you'll be alright, you'll just need to successfully dodge the charge another two times afterwards, which will make your kill longer and increase the food you use. Once you get the hang of it, and after some practice, it will become really easy to avoid the charge every single time. Now that we've covered all paths of phase 2, it's time to start phase 3. Phase 3 is really sort of the combination of everything you've faced already. To explain that, you will encounter all specials from Phase 1, as well as all unique specials from whichever paths are open during your kill. An exception to this would be if you killed all spiders during Phase 2 and you took Path 1. However, if you took Path 3 while Path 1 is open, for example, you will encounter minions starting on Phase 3. The same applies if you took Path 2 while Path 1 is open, again you will experience minions on Phase 3. The only new special on this phase is the harmless form of the highly acidic spider. Keep in mind that these are not the dangerous one hit spiders from phase 2. You can lure them into Araxor and he will gain less enrage on phase 4, but will also heal 5000 life points. In my opinion it really is not worth doing this, but you can experiment with it if you like. Keep in mind that these will only be present if path 2 is open. 
On this phase, Araxor gains the ability to use the same special back to back, as well as his attack speed being increased. This means that you won't always have anticipation or freedom ready for each special, so just always be prepared for anything. At the start of phase 3, Araxor will heal 80% of the sum of the remaining life points he had at the end of phase 1 and 2. This is why you should always try to damage him as low as possible before moving on from the previous phases. Now going into the method of how to complete phase 3, it's very similar to phase 1. You'll want to use Berserk and then build up to and use your main threshold abilities like Hurricane, Assault, and Quake. You'll also have to be careful due to the specials you will encounter, but really in comparison to phase 2, phase 3 is pretty simple. At this point, the fight is really just a matter of dealing with the specials and lowering his health to zero. Unlike on previous phases, this time when Araxor reaches zero life points, he will not regain 5,000 life points. Instead, phase 4 will begin. Phase 4 is the most difficult phase of the entire fight, and usually where things tend to go wrong really quickly for most players. Phase 4 begins with a little cutscene of your character jumping onto Araxor's legs, where he takes you to the phase 4 platform. This is the point at which Araxi will take over for the rest of the fight. First off, to cover some basic information, Araxi will use all of the main specials excluding the egg bombs. In addition, she will not summon one hit acidic spiders, but rather absorb the leftover acidity. She also has the ability to summon any leftover spiders from path 1, as well as the darkness special if path 3 is open. Araxi also gains a new ability. She is able to switch what combat style she uses based upon what you are praying against. This means that you will need to prayer switch, which is why I personally recommend binding your protection prayers to a keybind, as it will make switching much easier than just clicking them. Once the cutscene ends, you will want to stall your adrenaline using defensives, make sure you drink your anti-poison, and make sure that you're at full life points and potted up for the next phase. This is where I personally like to use my enhanced Excalibur special. At this point, you will want to stand where I am on screen now to make sure that you aren't being hit by her melee attacks and wait for Araxi to become attackable. Make sure you begin rotating Anticipation and Freedom and start doing damage. Be ready for the prayer switches as they are quite rapid in this range. From now until Araxi reaches 50k life points, nothing really changes. Just focus on your prayer switches, dealing damage, and avoiding the specials. Devotion and Debilitate can really help you out on this phase, so try to include them if you can. Once Araxi reaches 50k life points, she will stop doing all specials for the rest of the kill. At this point, you can just focus on prayer switching and dealing damage. Continue this, but be ready for when she reaches 25k life points. Once she reaches anywhere from 26k to 30k life points, try to use a threshold. Once she reaches 25k, you will lose 50% adrenaline and the black acid core will be released. This is usually when most people lose the kill and die, and it's really just due to panic rather than difficulty. The core is not nearly as scary as it looks. When it comes out, it will bounce around about 5 times before it lands on you. The key here is to stay calm. Once the core lands on you, let it hit you one time and then step away. Don't run around the room in a panic trying to avoid it, just let it hit you once and then step one square away. It isn't anywhere near as intimidating as it seems, you just need to keep your life points high and focus and you'll be fine. Keep attacking her and dodging the core, and focus on your prayer switches. Once Araxi is dead, click her body to receive your loot. Normally when I kill Araxi, I tend to use Berserk right near the beginning to finish her off as quickly as possible, which is something you can consider as you get more comfortable with her. However, for beginners, I try to avoid using Berserk on Phase 4 until you're more fully comfortable with all the mechanics and prayer switches, since you do take so much more damage. One thing that can help you out on Phase 4 is Revolution. I personally don't use it at any point during the kill, but having it active can make Phase 4 a lot more manageable until you feel more comfortable. Having Revo on will allow you to focus on just keeping your life points high and switching your prayers correctly, which can be more beneficial as you're learning. That should cover everything you need to know to get started killing Araxor with melee. If you enjoyed it or this video helped you, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like, as well as subscribing to the channel to keep up to date with all of my other videos. With that being said, thank you guys very much for watching, and please do leave a comment if you have any feedback as always. Thanks again, and good luck with your Araxor kills everyone.